Good morning. Good morning. I am so not used to seeing anyone. So if you just see me looking longingly into the camera, it's because I'm just used to talking into that for the past couple of weeks. So good morning. It's so good to see everyone in person. I'm so excited. This is how today is going to go, because it's just, like I said, I'm not used to people being here. I would go over to that camera right about now, turn it off, start again, and you'd have this beautiful service online without any interruptions. But that's not real life. Real life is about interruptions, the messiness of the love that we share here in this space. And speaking of love and hope, I love that each of you are here today. Today where we choose to love our neighbor. We choose to welcome one another in love. We choose love over hate. We choose love over animosity. We choose love over anger. Today our service is all about choosing love. No matter who or where you are joining us from, know that God is with you in this time and space of worship where love abounds. Let us begin this time of worship here and now with our invocation, welcoming God with loving praises from whatever space we gather from today. Friends, join me in this time of invocation. Holy One, you are deep within our world calling us to join you in creating abundant life for all. Open our hearts to recognize you. Free us to trust your call and follow. Enable us to repent and forgive. And join in your work to make all things new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And having welcomed God with love, let us welcome one another in this space with love. We share the peace of Christ in many ways. Air high fives, air hugs. Hey, if you want to pull out your phone and text someone who may not be here in person today, do that as well. We share the peace of Christ with one another here and now, letting no distance keep us from sharing the love of God. May the love and peace of Christ be with you. And also. Let us now listen together to our opening hymn.
join me in our call to worship found in your bulletin. Where do we find you, Holy One, and how do we follow? Find me at your table. We'll share your food. Find me in your resources. We'll share your riches. Find me in your power. We'll share your mercy. Find me in your pain. We'll share your forgiveness. Find me in your generosity. We'll share all and expect nothing in return. In community, seek my holiness. We follow you in love, generosity, joy. In the world, share my desire. We follow you in justice, mercy, peace for all. Friends, join me in this call to confession. Holy One, your call is deceptively simple. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And yet, and yet, we cling to self-serving ways which separate us from your beloved creation. You call us to turn our lives around, to risk repentance and learn forgiveness, to work with patience and diligence to prepare the way for your reign. But we just get discouraged and give up too soon. Lord, have mercy. You call us to be full of joyful confidence, to create community where all have enough for abundant life. But we burden ourselves with anxiety and fear. Christ, have mercy. You call us to speak out in the presence of injustice, but too often we do not challenge words and actions rooted in hate. Holy One, have mercy. Friends, hear these words of good news. Our God is good and generous and loving. Trust in Jesus' promise. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. It is in this love that is freely given and freely received in Jesus Christ, that we are each forgiven. Hear the good news. And hear the good news of what is going on in our community now with our time of announcements. If you have an emergency and need to reach me, Pastor Jess, immediately, you can reach me on my cell phone. That number can be found in your weekly bulletin. I'm always just a phone call or text away. And a reminder that the church office is also open on Wednesday mornings from 9 a.m. until 11. If you need to reach us outside of those times, you can always email us at quentinucc at gmail.com. New Horizons is planning to meet at Grace UCC Lebanon on Saturday, February 26th at 2 o'clock. If you'd like to attend, bring your favorite games to play. This group is an opportunity for fellowship for single adults. And mark your calendars for Ash Wednesday, which is on March 2nd. We'll again be offering ashes to go. You just have to drive up under the portico and put a mask on from 9 to 10.30 a.m. There will also be a brief service at 6.30 p.m. that night for another opportunity to receive ashes. A daily devotional, keeping with our bread theme for this year for the season of Lent, called Not By Bread Alone, has been ordered and will be available for you to take home on Ash Wednesday. The Upper Room Daily Devotional for the months of March and April is also available right now in the Gathering Place at Narthex. Be sure to pick up your copy. And Suzanne, I know you had an announcement about Nana's Closet. I'd love to invite you up to share that right now. Good morning. It's lovely to see your smiling eyes. Uh, I wanted to keep you caught up a little bit. Uh, though the church has been on Zoom for a while, the Nanas have not. We have been in-house doing some work. Um, we were open every Sunday.
from 12 to 2, and we got very little business. Uh, our, our emphasis hasn't been on PR. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to go about doing that. So we decided to make an executive decision and open just the first Sunday of every month from 12 to 2 until we can pick up enough business to make it worthwhile. However, having said that, we have been servicing the local schools. We have sent clothing to every building in the Cornwall Lebanon School District, four elementary, one middle school, and one high school. We've contacted the nurses, we found out what they need, everything's been delivered. In some cases, we've made several trips. So then we thought, well, that's pretty good. We're sort of a distribution center. So then we got in touch with Lebanon School District. And uh, guess what? We also found a customer there. We delivered bundles of clothing to five elementary schools in the Lebanon School District and also to the nurse at the high school. And she recommended the business ed teacher who contacted me and said, I do a course on teaching kids how to interview and sending them out, and a lot of them don't have business clothing. So guess what? Now we have a good collection of business clothing, and we'll take more if you have dress shirts, dress blouses that you're not using. Drop them off back in our storage room back there, and we'll put them to use. So that's good news. We're kind of a distribution center now, and we're OK with that. And, and we're, you know, we're ready to expand. So I also wanted to tell you on a, with a different hat, the uh, empowerment team has come up with a banner saying the corner of hope and love. And the letters are about yay high. Um, Mr. Steve Miller from Cedar Crest High School is going to be doing that for us. So I have a copy of the banner, just the paper version, obviously. And I'm going to take it out in the gathering place, and we're gonna spread it out and give you an idea of what we hope to move forward with. So we wanna have that on the wall up there. Okay, so that's where we stand so far. You're all caught up. Bananas have certainly been busy. Uh, keeping with our busyness, the LCCM's annual golf outing will be held on Friday, May 20th. Mark your calendars for that day for a day of fun golf. And LCCM will also again be sponsoring the ecumenical lunch and breakfast at South Lebanon Community Church, which is 13 Evergreen Road in Lebanon, on Saturday, March something, question mark. Um, tickets are $15 and can be purchased by sending payment to Lebanon County Christian Ministries. Uh, please write Lent and Breakfast tickets in the memo line on your check. The deadline to purchase tickets is Thursday, March 17th. That ends our time for announcements, but worship is just getting started. So I'd like to invite any children or, who are here for worship today to come on up for our children's conversation. I have to stand by a microphone, so I don't think you have cooties. But I'm just going to stay over here so everyone can hear our conversation, okay? Or actually, I have my portable mic. I can move. Okay. Hey, Maddie. How are you doing today? Good. How's school going? Good. Have you been really mean to people in your class? Have you been really nice to people in your class? Can I give you a so I have a question. Since you've been kind to people, are they people that are also nice to you? Kind of? What about you, Nicholas? Are they people that are usually nice to you? Is it sometimes hard to be nice to people who aren't nice to you? Yeah. Maybe people who say mean things or just maybe try to avoid you? That's definitely hard to be nice to those people. But in our scripture today, we're going to hear Jesus talk about how we're called to be nice to everyone, even when it might not be the easiest thing, right? So when, it, when, we have to be, when we need to be nice to that kid in class, we might be having a hard day, we need to have a kindness to get our topic to remind ourselves, be kind, no matter what goes on. What can we do to share kindness with people? Have, you can say nice words, what are some nice words you can say? Thank you. I'm so grateful that you did that. I'm glad you're my friend. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. 
And now it's time for our Gospel reading. Our Gospel reading today comes to us from Luke's Gospel. Today we join Jesus, his disciples, and the, mu the multitudes, not on a mount, but on a level plain. I'll be reading this passage twice today. I invite you, as this passage is read the first time, to imagine that you are in the way back of the crowd, maybe where Marilyn is sitting back there. I'll wave to Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. You're in the back of the crowd. Or maybe you are all the way up front where Brian is sitting. You'll imagine you're in that seat in the second reading. Pay attention to how you hear and experience this story differently today, as you imagine you're in different spots in the crowd. Join me, the disciples, the multitudes, and Jesus, as we hear this reading today from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. Imagine you are pressed in the crowd on the level ground, listening to Jesus as he says these words. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them to the other side also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you good, do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those whom you respect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured for you. In this second reading, I want you to imagine that you're right next to Jesus as you hear these words again. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them. And lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. 
Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with good measure you use, it will be measured for you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. As you imagine this passage today, did you have a clear view of Jesus? Could you hear him perfectly as you were pressed right against him and the disciples? Were you just taking the whole scene in? Or were you squished pushing your way in the back, only catching a few words every so often? Jesus himself states at the very beginning of this scripture today, to those who are listening, to those who are listening, which kind of implies that some people were there, but not really paying attention to what he was saying. Instead, just kind of there, because it was the thing to do that day. Oh, look, a big crowd. Let's go check it out, Martha, and see what's going on. It looks like everyone in town is gathering. We can't be the only ones not there. Were you in the crowd because you were listening or because you were intrigued? Some closer, some further away, some peering over the heads of those in front of them, others ducking and diving in between those ahead of them to just get a little bit closer look at Christ because being vertically challenged on the level playing field does not bode well for eye contact. How did your space in the crowd affect you? What words did you catch as Christ spoke today? I personally was in the front of the crowd and heard every single word that Christ spoke. But I have a correspondent here. Where is she? Oh, there's my correspondent. Suzanne, yes. Uh, you, you were quite a ways back in the crowd today, weren't you? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, but really, it was quite an experience. You know, a lot of people were talking, so we didn't really get the whole sermon experience. But the energy was good, and we liked what we did here. Oh, so let me get this straight. You only caught some of what Christ said as he spoke today. Well, d did you hear that part to love your enemies? Um, well, yeah, we only got some, just kind of like bits and pieces. But we love what he said, especially the part about love. You know, we love love back here. Oh, so you, you heard about love, which is good. That's good. Because you do love, you love the people you love. Yeah, well, you know, so many people were shouting and clapping their hands when Christ said to love one another because we already love people who love us. But, Suzanne, that's, that's not what Christ said. He said to love everybody, even the ones who, you know, are hard to love. You know, I, I don't think so. We're pretty sure that's what he said back right here. You know, no one would still be here if he said to love your enemy. So, let me get this straight. You like what you think you heard better. Well, let, let's just see. Uh, what else did you hear in the midst of that noisy crowd? Maybe something else Jesus said that might have sat a little easier, was a little clearer to hear. Well, you know, we heard other things that excited the crowd. When Christ talked about sharing blessings, folks became very excited and started talking about all the blessings Christ had already done. So, it's a lot of very high energy Okay, so you heard about blessings. That's great. Yeah. Um, bless those who bless you. The message was as clear as day. I heard it in the crowd. Um, okay, so you, you bless those who love you. That's great. I, I, that's great, Suzanne, but that's not what Christ said either. What Christ actually said was to bless those who hate you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what he said. Um, 
There's something else you heard in the midst of crowds. Maybe something that really spoke to you. You heard it clear. You couldn't be confused. No one was talking loud enough. You, you heard Christ 100%. Well, we can hear more in the crowd on top of loving those who love you and blessing those who share their blessings with you. We also heard Christ talking about giving generously. People really seem to resonate with that here today. Give to everyone. Oh, so you heard the part about giving to those who curse you. And you do that. Well, I don't think I heard that. Oh. After Christ said, give, yeah, someone shouted, you mean like a piece of your mind? Oh, we yeah. all have a good laugh about that. It was quite the bonding experience, Jess, I have to tell you. That's not what he said. You, you don't give them a piece of your mind. Uh, you give them what you have. That's, oh my. You see, you see. Yeah, it seems like a good idea. Yeah, it does sound like a good idea when we choose what to hear from Christ's call to care for all people. The people we love only. That call is a lot easier than to care for all of God's people. When we choose to care for all of God's people, we share our blessings with everyone and give freely. Only then are we truly living out our name as Christians. When we call ourselves Christians, we cannot be selective in what we hear God calling us to do in this space of worship, in this space where God is at work in each of our lives. We are called to do the hard work of the church, loving, caring, and sharing with all of God's people no matter who or where they are on life's journey. We are called to listen to that still speaking voice of God that is speaking to us all in the gathered and scattered crowds today and to really hear where God is calling us to do the work of the church and of the world. Friends, let us pray and hear God speak into each of us. God, let us listen to you without distraction. Let us do your work with intention. Let us care for all of your people without hesitation. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, field reporter Suzanne. I don't know if I get the right? Not today. Friends, join me in this time of meditative hymn. Praying is a risk. 
because we do not know what will come when we pray. Will our prayers be answered, or will we be left wondering how you showed up that day? The day when we lifted up the prayers for the hurting, and we still saw hurt people. The day when we prayed for the sick, but we still saw so many people ill. But you, O oh God, you stop and remind us that you were there with us in the hurting. You sat alongside us in our sadness, and we were not alone. You sat alongside us in our sickness. You were working alongside the doctors, nurses, and caretakers. You remind us that you work in and through everyday people to have prayers answered in expected and unexpected ways. God, hear our prayers. And we remember those who we pray for in this space, whose names we know and whose names we have yet to learn. We hold in this stillness Stephanie, Brad, Tom, Anne, Ken, Corrine, Sherry, and Charles. And we ask your presence be made known to the family and friends of Carol, Diane, and Jen. In the stillness of this moment, we hold all of those whose names we have lifted up and all of those situations we hold in the stillness and silence of our hearts. God, hear our prayers and work alongside us, in us, and through us, caring for all of your people, named and left unspoken. And God, you have worked. You have worked in and through humankind for a while now. You have worked through the newest members and through our seasoned saints, Jean, Marion, and Mary, who we give thanks and praise for today and every day. You, O oh God, are with us, no matter who or where we are. No matter our place in the crowd, no matter what we are going through, no matter how we may be feeling or hearing you speak to us that day, God, you are taking risks alongside each of us, each and every day. And you will hear each of us calling out to you now in this time of prayer, in one voice, taking a risk alongside you, in the prayer your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we give our tithes and offerings, we are witnesses to the transforming love of God and Christ. I invite you to give generously, as you have received. If you're joining us in person today, we have a welcome basket that you can place your offering in on our welcome table. If you're joining us online, there is a link in the description of this video. As always, you can send your offering into the church at our address, Quentin UCC, P.O. Box 1138, Quentin, PA 17083. Let us give thanks for the gifts we have shared, the gifts we will share, and the gifts we rejoice in in this space, here and now. Let us praise. Accept these gifts, we humbly pray, O oh God. Let them give you honor and glory as we serve the needs of your people. 
And let the call and redeemed of God say, Amen. Friends, join me in voice, body, and spirit in our closing hymn. Jim, what number are we singing? 455. Number 455. <laughs> And I love you. And I love you. And I love you.